And the seven angels with the seven trumpets prepared to blow them. And the first one blew his trumpet. And there occurred a hail and fire mingled with blood. And it was hurled to the earth. And a third of the earth was burned up. And a third of the trees was burned up. And all the green vegetation was burned up. And the second angel blew his trumpet. And something like a great mountain burning with fire was hurled into the sea. And a third of the sea became blood. And a third of the creatures that are in the sea, which have souls, died. And the third of the boats were wrecked. And the third angel blew his trumpet. And a great star burning as a lamp fell from heaven. And it fell upon a third of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And a third of the waters turned into Wormwood, and many of the men died from the waters because these had been made bitter. Our sun is about 900,000 miles in diameter. It makes up about 99.8% of all the mass in our solar system. Now, to give you an idea of how large that is, our planet Earth is about 8,000 miles in diameter, which makes the sun around 109 times the size of Earth. If you were to fly nonstop around the Earth at more than 500 miles per hour, then it would take a little over two days to make the trip. To go around the sun at that same speed, it would take you seven months. The sun is about 93 million miles away from us. Since it takes about two days to fly the circumference of the earth, which is 26,000 miles, it would take you 19 years to get to the sun from the earth at the same speed. Are you with me so far? Now, what most people don't know is that the majority of star systems in our galaxy are binary, meaning they have two or more suns. So, it is a good possibility that we have more than one sun in our solar system. And the theory has not yet been disproven. The closest planet to the sun, Mercury, is about 36 million miles from the sun. It is the closest. It travels through space at a speed of over 100,000 miles per hour. It is the fastest planet, completing its trip around the sun in just 88 Earth days. But it has a very slow rotation. It takes 59 Earth days for the sun to rise and set on Mercury. And as the sun rises on Mercury, it gets bigger and bigger because Mercury gets closer and closer up to the halfway point where the Sun begins to go down and then Mercury moves away from the Sun. Mercury has no moon but Mercury does have an atmosphere. It is constantly created and destroyed because of Mercury's proximity to the Sun. In the right conditions, it is possible to see Mercury with a pair of binoculars. But because of its speed and close proximity to the sun, you really need to know what you're doing. The point is, Mercury is only a third of the size of our planet, and it it is extremely close to the sun, moving very fast. Yet you can see it, almost in plain sight. In fact, It was observed earlier this year moving across the sun with very simple viewing equipment. Do you see where I'm going with this? Next we have Venus. It is nearly twice the distance from the sun than Mercury. It takes about 225 days for Venus to revolve around the sun. It also rotates in the opposite direction than the other planets, which is weird. 
And one day on Venus is longer than a year on Venus, which is why we really only see one side of it. Venus is slightly smaller than Earth, but very similar in composition. In fact, Venus would probably be a second Earth if it wasn't so close to the Sun. But you can see it. It is by far the brightest planet, appearing as the brightest star in the sky. You don't need any equipment to see Venus, even though it is 26 million miles away from us. Again, no moon, but it does have an atmosphere, a very dense one. Next we have our planet Earth. Now, since we know more about the other planets than Earth and its moon, I'm going to move past Earth and go on to Mars. Mars is about half the size of Earth. It has two moons. It's often referred to as the red planet because of the red iron oxide dust in its atmosphere. Sound familiar? You're going to be able to find more information on Mars than any other planet, period. Why? They're just now admitting that Mars has water, but are still waiting to tell us that it also has forest. They have vehicles driving around on the surface, folks. They know what's there. Now, Mars is only half the size of Earth, and it is about twice the distance of Venus. But in the right conditions, you can still see it with the naked eye. If we go off further, we have the asteroid belt, which is where most of the debris that hits our planet on a daily basis comes from. It is a never-ending mass of assorted rocks stretching all the way around the sun in the same elliptic plane as the other planets, which suggests that the asteroid belt may have once been a planet that had a bad day and was broken up into the mess we see out there between Mars and Jupiter. Which brings me to Jupiter. Now, Jupiter is the fifth planet from the sun and nearly 400 million miles away from us. It is the largest planet in our solar system, over 10 times the size of Earth, with at least 67 moons, and it takes 12 Earth years for it to revolve around the sun. It is the fourth brightest star in the sky, so yes, you can still see it without a telescope, barely. It is brightly lit by the sun, so it can be seen even though it's 400 million miles away. Okay, now, Saturn, the sixth planet, the second largest planet, with 62 known moons in a 29-year orbit around the sun, can still be seen with your own two eyes, good eyes, on a really dark night. Now, if you want to see the rings, you need a telescope or a really good pair of binoculars. The point is, you can still see it, even though it is more than twice the distance from us than Jupiter. Hell, Uranus is smaller than Saturn, and it is over 1.6 billion miles away from us. Billion. But when the sun lights it up bright, in the right conditions, you can see it. It has at least 27 moons or satellites and an 84-year orbit around the sun. Which, mean it on, which means it only revolves around the sun once or twice in a person's lifetime. Next we have Neptune. Now this is where things get complex, because you don't see Neptune without a telescope. The only reason anyone was able to find it is because of, because of mathematical calculations. Astronomers knew that something was tugging or perturbing the orbit of Uranus, and with the right math, they were able to pinpoint its location. Now they can point a telescope in that direction, magnify, and there you have Neptune and its 15 known moons. It has a 165 year orbit around the sun and it is well over 2.7 billion miles away from us. Now, now, Keep in mind that all the other stars in the sky are stars or suns. They give off their own light. So even though they are light years away, you can still see them. The only way you can see the planets that surround those stars 
as if the light from those stars reflect off the planet in our direction. Otherwise, if you know where the planet is located, then you can see it with the telescope technology that can detect electromagnetic radiation. The radiation that is given off by the planet that we can't see with our eyes no matter how close or far it is. Now, you can call Pluto the ninth planet with its five moons, but it is way out there in the Kuiper Belt, which is another ring of bodies moving around the sun. Now, Pluto is actually smaller than our moon and has an orbit around the sun of 248 years. Now, the fact is, there are many other bodies in our solar system that have been dubbed planets. So technically, there are way more than eight or nine planets in our solar system. In fact, there are more than 40. Remember, a planet needs to be within that two billion mile distance from us to see it without a telescope once the sun lights it up. So, after Pluto, we have the planet Eris. Oh, you didn't know that there was another planet confirmed by NASA out past Pluto called Eris. Well, you should have. It was discovered back in 2005. It has an orbit of 560 years and one moon. It is the largest known dwarf planet in our solar system and has a very eccentric orbit around our sun. It is known as the 10th planet. It is also known as a trans-Neptunian object, which is another name for a planet that is out past Neptune. And there are several. Ceres, Haumea, Makemake, all planets, all revolving around our sun. So what does that tell you, folks? It tells you that all the knowledge we gained in school about our solar system ain't worth shit today. And anyone who says Planet X doesn't exist doesn't know what they're talking about because I just gave you four examples of planets many of you didn't even know existed until now. The possibility of the existence of Planet X is very real, folks. NASA knows more than you think they do. The fact is, the more people try to find evidence to prove that Planet X does not exist, the more evidence they find to prove that it does.